the search for health and vitality in the beneficent rays of the sun. Today, millions of people make regular pilgrimages to bathing beaches, mountain peaks, and other places especially favored by the sun, seeking its health-giving bounty. In ancient times, people reverenced the sun as the god of health, sending light to earth dwellers. But neither he nor any of the ancients knew why the sun brought health, why it healed wounds. They knew only that their sun god sent light and health-giving rays, and that was good enough. Those ancient sun worshippers must have seen many rainbows, but they never associated this awe-inspiring display with a breakdown of sunlight. The red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet were not all of the rays of sunlight. They were only the visible rays. That portion of sunlight which the human eye can see, the long invisible red rays, which transferred more heat than the visible red rays. And in the following year, the noted German physician Ritter discovered the shorter and more chemically powerful ultraviolet rays at the other end of the spectrum. Light, like sound, travels in waves. These waves, like ocean waves, can be measured. The length of a wave being the distance from the crest of one wave to the crest of the next wave. Ocean waves are the longest which we see in nature. These little ripples are also waves, but their wavelengths are much smaller than the giant ocean waves. But even these tiny waves are tremendous in size compared to the wavelengths of light, which are so small that an entirely different unit of measurement had to be developed, the accepted unit of measurement of light. But it wasn't until 1877 that a sensational discovery was made by two English scientists. Their discovery was the start of the great modern development of ultraviolet therapy. These men exposed a tube of microscopic organisms to the sun. They then wrapped a second tube containing organisms in black paper and placed it next to the first. After several hours of strong sunlight, they found that the covered tube was alive with microscopic organisms, while the exposed tube was free of them. This experiment, plus others, proved that it was the short ultraviolet rays and only the ultraviolet rays which killed bacteria. That is, they were bactericidal. But the ultraviolet rays of the sun could not be depended upon. For unfortunately, ultraviolet light, as offered by nature, is very changeable and unreliable. It varies in different parts of the world, different seasons of the year, and different times of the day. In addition, and even more important, most of the valuable rays are soaked up by the Earth's atmosphere. The long infrared heat rays get through the Earth's atmosphere easily. But only the few ultraviolet rays near the visible part of the spectrum reach the Earth's surface. And those few that do get through are further dissipated by the haze and smoke of modern industrial life. Even the glass in our homes and our modern clothes prevent us from getting any of the benefits of the sun's valuable ultraviolet rays. Most people born in a field of disaster Never find their way to the flowers beyond This universe is speaking with infinite tongues And unlimited perceptions are part of the one Incredible mercy, unfathomable love My tiny existence under the sun
flowers still in this body still on this earth